you know, after you read the thing, and then like, oh, okay, wrong It's a reunion every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been. It feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy to grab hold of those who are home for us, who make a home for us, whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them again. It is joy to go home. John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve and give and care for others, by how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. Please join me in the Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found in your bulletin. wonderful morning it is. I would like to give gratitude and thanks to each and every one of you that was able to make it here today as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. For all those that are visiting, see this church as a second home, one that you are always welcome in. We would also like to thank you to those that are watching online as well, for we are truly blessed to have you guys join us today. All right, now I will be passing it to Pastor John so he may go over some ministry highlights. Thank you. Aloha, it's good to see all of you today. Uh, as we're coming up close to Christmas, we've made some additions in our decorations. We have a lovely uh, crest scene there with, some, uh, lovely, uh, with a lovely tree and some flowers. So we're getting, as we get closer to Christmas, we seem to add more El, El Christmas into our, into our sanctuary. So it's so nice to see. Uh, this is the third Sunday of Advent, 
And uh, we're rounding up some of uh, the ministries that we're working on for Christmas, particularly the angel tree. Uh, I think this is the last week. Do you want to get up and, and give a little? Uh, uh, well, or do you want me to just? Uh, OK. Um, Lahaina United Church has made the news again. Now, local newspaper reporters have made a startling discovery. Uh, the Lahaina Church sent 200 Christmas child boxes all over the world or somewhere. We don't know exactly where. Now, at an estimate of $34 each, that comes to $6,800. Now, we're attempting to do 50 angels. Now, that's only a quarter of the number of boxes that we sent. And these are for our West Maui community. Now, we've estimated uh, $25 each for an angel. Now that comes to $1,250. Now unfortunately, $5,000 more, more than that, went away from our community. So we hope we can do better at least for next year and we'll see. Aloha. So we have some angels on our trees in the back. If you'd like to uh, pick an angel for uh, one of the uh, kapuna in the, in the community or, or parents or children uh, looking to uh, have a, a good Christmas this year. I am pleased to report that the, um, this year the Rotary Club of Lahaina uh, contributed uh, five trees to the Salvation Army so that people can have Christmas trees in their house. So that was really wonderful. And also the preschool. Uh, our our uh, Rainbow um, Kids Preschool has also, uh, they're also doing 25 of the angels as well. So hopefully uh, our church together can do 75 if we can do those, those back there and maybe get a few more. The deadline is coming up on the 14th, right? It's supposed to be. I'm yeah. sure they would accept later. Yeah, so I, uh, Rita over at the Salvation Army uh, will probably be pleased to get them up into the day. So uh, we'll keep posted. If we go through those angels, I can always get more. Uh, we've got a good relationship with the Salvation Army this year, and uh, it's, it's a delight. This is actually better than we've done any year, so we'll break records here, but I would like, as Carol said, to really uh, see if we can't uh, really give to our community uh, through the, uh, the Angel Tree Program. I'd also like to point out that our gift shop downstairs uh, is stocked with Christmas items. So we have some lovely Christmas cards. We have some beautiful gifts. So those of you who are traveling here to Hawaii, there's some unique hand-created presents down there, some beautiful cards, hand-drawn cards, some wonderful cards with our own church on it. And we also have some beautiful Christmas cards downstairs as well, as well as other beautiful items. The proceeds of that go into uh, keeping, uh, maintain, maintaining this uh, nearly 100-year-old building, which we are working to uh, do a little bit of renovation uh, to fix some of the, the wood that's damaged, uh, some of the windows that are, ha that are starting to fall out. So we're doing some work on that and, and, uh, and also probably get some paint on there. We worked with the preschool to renovate back there and it looks really beautiful. So now we're uh, focusing on our church, all in preparation for our 100th anniversary next year, which we will celebrate uh, with little events throughout the year, but the big day is in October, October 22nd. But we'd like to open up, I, we think this is a great opportunity to open up our church to the community so people can get to know uh, this church on the corner. We've already very well known. We've been here, like I said, for almost 100 years. And many people in the neighborhood, even though they don't come here, uh, use our facilities for activities uh, and they love coming uh, to, uh, to our services. Even our Christmas Eve service will probably have some people from our community as well. And so we want to be able to open up and, and let people know the wonderful history of our church. If you'd like to donate to our renovation fund, you can uh, send a check to our church um, and just write renovation fund on it, or you can donate through our website under the renovation, building renovation fund 
tab. And I'd like to take this moment to thank all of the people, the generous people that have already donated so much uh, to, to keep us going. To, we were able to get started and uh, work, give money over to the preschool for the work they did. And we have some money to make a good start on uh, preparations that we're going to start early next year to, uh, to fix up our church. Okay, um, later on today, on Sunday at 6 p.m., is our Tongan language worship service. It'll be right here in this sanctuary. Uh, it's a beautiful service with uh, beautiful hymns. It'll run, be from 6 to 7 p.m. today. And then uh, after that, at 7.30 p.m., Pastor Carlos and Pastor Nuria leave, lead a, um, a Spanish language worship service. Uh, they, they do that on Sundays at 7.30, as well as Wednesdays. And uh, that's here from 7.30 till about 8.30 p.m. And Pastor Carlos and Pastor Nuria also lead an ESL class, an English as a Second Language class, on Tuesdays for uh, the growing number of people on this island that are learning English, that, uh, that are not familiar with, with English. And through that class, he's been able to build up his ministry. And it's been a, really a delight to work with Pastor Carlos. And, and as COVID, um, as their concerns of COVID go away, uh, eventually we'd like to have a joint service among all of our different language uh, our language ministries uh, to really um, highlight, showcase the wonderful ministries that are going on in this church. On Fridays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Maui Rescue Mission is here and they provide showers and laundry and clothes and medical services and um, help getting into housing as well as help getting IDs and things like that, helping people with their paperwork and also a place where people can collect their mail, they can relax, and they can uh, just talk story uh, to each other. Uh, and it's, it's, it's really a good, nice community. And on that day, we, we lead a Bible study with uh, Pastor Abel and I. Abel is one of the, is one of the uh, leaders of the Maui Rescue Mission. We lead a, a Bible study on Fridays at 11 a.m. So it's a really a, a, a great ministry from 10 to 2 if you'd like to, to check it out. If you have donations you'd like to bring by, they can always use more clothing, uh, particularly men's clothing, that's uh, in pretty good shape, uh, but also some women's clothing and some other things too, some maybe some um, hygiene items and things like that. So again, that's here on the, on the campus, sort of in the back behind the preschool from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And, uh, and then finally, our Christmas Eve service will be on uh, Sunday, I'm sorry, not Sunday, December 24th, uh, at 4.30 p.m. in back of our church. Uh, and it's, it'll be on the lawn because we usually get a, a, number, a lot of people that show up for that. And uh, we spread out on the lawn. We'll have, um, we'll have hula dancing. We have a trumpet player. We have a harpist. We have, it's going to be a beautiful, we're going to have the hallelujah chorus and a, a, a wonderful kids play, which I, I can't wait to see. So it should be a really wonderful gathering if you're here in, in Hawaii, uh, in Maui and would like to check it out. Again, it's 4.30 on Christmas Eve. We'll also be live streaming it on our Facebook page. That's all I have now for our uh, upcoming ministries. And so now we'll, I'll ask uh, a liturgist to lead our call to worship. Please stand and join with me in, in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Let all who love God rejoice. Let all who long for Christ sing for joy. Let all who seek the Spirit shout aloud. Please remain standing as we sing the hymn of praise, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. soul and voice give ye heed to what we say news news jesus christ is born today ox and ass before him bow and he is in the manger now christ is born today christ is born today 
Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. News, news, Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door, and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls on you and calls you all to the everlasting home. Christ was born to save, Christ was born to save. You may be seated. And please be in an attitude of prayer for our prayer of invocation. Creator and sustainer, we do not always rush to do your will. Often we tiptoe our way into obedience, dragging old habits and mindsets with us. Refine us, Lord, as we gather here today. Give us ears, minds, and hearts that delight at your voice and trust that your calling is always good news. We ask this through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now as we share our joys and concerns, uh, the joys and concerns have been submitted over the last couple weeks and we receive a number of them. So what we're going to do is I'll read them in groups and then I'll prompt um, Lord in your mercy and if you can reply, hear our prayers. We pray for safe travels uh, to Oahu where uh, David Hong and his family will undergo, David Hong will undergo re reconstruct reconstructive ACL surgery on his knee. So we pray for safe travels for he, him and his mom and all those who are going with him. And also we pray that the surgeons are guided by God's hand uh, to heal com uh, David completely so that he can be back to full strength. We pray for Riley Hope Jacobs, the 20-year-old granddaughter of Linda and Dave Cantrell struggling with complications from diabetes and autoimmune syndrome. Prayers for an anonymous friend of our Ohana who is struggling with asthma. We pray for the family of Gary Aikens, longtime friend of our congregation who passed away suddenly in October. May God provide strength, comfort, and peace to his wife, Gail, and family. We offer prayers for Chris, Edie, and John's friend, for Chris, Edie, Edie and John's friend, who is positive for COVID. We pray for Frank Seltzer uh, for prayers that he receives good results from the clinical testing he underwent a few weeks ago. Prayers for the work of the workers at the Lord Royal Lahaina Hotel that they are protected in the transfer of the new management. Continued prayers for the Gonzalez family uh, after recovering for the loss, after the loss of Craig Gonzalez who passed away a number of months ago while they were visiting here in Lahaina. Our church got to know that family as we surrounded them with prayer and um, and we prayed with uh, Darla and family when they were here. So now they're home uh, celebrating their first uh, Christmas without Craig. So we, we send prayers to them uh, as she, is, uh, she and her family are, are, are struggling uh, to find uh, uh, the hope and, and love in their community. We ask that all those that are involved in her church and all of her friends surround her with love and the family. Prayers for Lassini, Fonda's mother, who's in the hospital in Tonga. We pray for healing for her. For healing, healing for Janice Markwith and strength for her family, Doreen and Trey. We offer prayers for Chris and Velvet Wellen as Chris undergoes rehab after a stroke, especially for his ability to speak and his ability to ambulate. And, and we also pray for strength and assurance to his wife Velvet and family. We pray for Jodine Bryan that she continues to do well after her lung transplant. For these prayers, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those struggling with cancer, 
Prayers for Ellen D. Giampolo's brother, Carl, and his wife, Ginger, who are both struggling with cancer. And we pray for their families uh, as they, uh, their mo her mom, Ellen, brothers, uh, children. We pray that God surrounds them with hope and, and healing for, for Carl and Ginger. Pray for Herb, uh, who's the friend of the Machones family, undergoing radiation treatment. We pray for Doug James, diagnosed with low-grade leukemia, who is being carefully monitored. We offer prayers for Jill, a friend of Edie Machones, for successful treatment for nerve pain after, uh, after cancer surgery. We pray for Lindsay go, going through chemotherapy and for her husband Greg and daughter Haley and mother uh, Margie and, and father Terry uh, during this time as they surround her as she's going through the chemotherapy. We pray for Lori Ramsey for this, for, who's fighting stage four colon cancer. We pray for Denny White, Joan Stockman's brother who is battling leukemia. And we pray for Kelly Hessen family for continued healing after her surgery for cancer. For these prayers, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For some ongoing requests, Vanessa's uncle Nito, who's had medical problems, we pray for healing for him. We pray for the Ebison family in Albuquerque going through a difficult time, especially their son, Nathan, and granddaughter. We pray for Marceline, who's struggling with acute allergies, and we pray for healing. We pray for Troy and family during challenging times to find comfort and strength. And we pray for uh, Linda Takahashi, who's struggling with health issues, and also for strength for, and, uh, and uh, uh, an assurance for her husband, Les. For these prayers, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. And finally, some prayers for our community and country. Uh, we pray for the Maui Rescue Mission for all the work that they're doing in our community. And we pray that they receive the financial support to continue their mission to feed our hungry and homeless neighbors. We pray for the Salvation Army that's doing good work with our kapuna and members of our community that are in need. We pray for all the nonprofits, churches, and community leaders who are joining together in finding solutions to homelessness and, and uh, the housing crisis, and also for the politicians that are, that are getting involved in this struggle as well. We pray for protection for all of our medical staff and first responders as they serve our community. We pray for those who are struggling with the after effects of COVID, financial instability, loss of loved ones, delayed recovery from illness, and just the loneliness that came through that, through that, um, through that time. We pray for the people of Haiti after the earthquake and the con continuing struggles that they're occurring, incurring now. We pray for the people uh, in Kentucky uh, who have undergone, uh, who have gone through a horrible hurricane. We pray that. Uh, we pray for those that have, that have lost their lives in this hurricane. We pray for the families that are worried about family members there, those who have lost their homes. We pray that uh, God can surround them with, uh, with comfort, that God can bring into that, those communities people that can help them restore their lives. We pray for the people of Afghanistan for safety and peace. We pray for racial reconciliation in this country that will honor, respect, and value all racial and ethnic identities. We offer prayers for our country's leaders after a sudden uh, and a sudden and a spirit of cooperation that will help us resolve the many problems that we're facing in this world. And we pray for an end to violence, a commitment to loving our neighbor, loving the migrant and the stranger, protecting our children and helping the poor. And for all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. <clears throat> compassionate God, in your mercy grant us grace. We pray for our loved ones that they may be healthy, happy, and whole. We pray for the ill, the grieving, and the lonely. We pray for, pray for those who are making noble efforts to stay sober. We pray for those who are refusing to speak to each other. We pray for those who are desperate for a good night's sleep. We pray for those enduring the holidays and those who need assurance that second chances in life are real. Through our prayers, Lord, bind us together. Help us be your messengers of the good news to all who need to hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may remain seated as we join together in the unison prayer. Great God of promise, you have come to us in Christ whose birth the angels sing. 
Your glory has appeared, and we have seen it together. You have anointed us with your Holy Spirit, and we are filled with joy. Open our hearts to receive that joy as we worship today so that we may share it with everyone we know. We ask in our Savior's name. Amen. First scripture reading is taken from Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 14 through 10, 20 on in the Old Testament. You may follow along as it is printed in your bulletin. Sing along, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will, will guide your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and join with me in the affirmation of faith found in your bulletin. Let's begin. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. 
Now, um, as we uh, gather for our offering, I'd like to make a uh, note that we will not be passing around a basket for offering, but we do have bowls in the back of the church if you'd like to, to leave an offering uh, as you leave. And uh, now we call up our, our uh, choir to come up and sing their beautiful offering song. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the song that we're about to share with you this morning, it's called Sing with the Glory of God. I hope you enjoy. Oh, 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 
who gives all gifts in this season we focus so much on giving gifts to one another help us we pray to remember what John the Baptist tells us that what is on your wish list that he, we might bear fruit worthy of the repentance that is in the very heart of this season fruit of compassion fruit of sharing fruit of denying ourselves so that others who have so little will have enough in response to you we give that our fruit might please you. In, the, in our Savior's name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> our hymn of preparation today is Breathe on Me, Breath of God, and the words can be found on the screen and in your bulletin, so join. Shall I never die, but 
live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Our gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestors. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruits is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the, into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this is the third Sunday of Advent and we, it's a day that we focus on joy. Uh, we already had a day where we focused on hope and peace and joy, and the next week we focus on love. These are the four themes of the Advent season as we prepare our hearts uh, for the coming of Christ in our lives. Gaudete is the word, the Latin word, which means rejoice, and it's Gaudete Sunday is, although has a long tradition in the church, and this is uh, traditionally known as Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is the first word in the uh, chant or antiphon that is, it is recited in the Latin mass on, on this day. And it's, the words are Gaudete in Domino Semper, Interum Dico Gaudete, which recites Philippians chapter four, verse four, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And rejoice is the very act of acting out our joy. And this passage is from, a, uh, from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, which is, provides a recipe for rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about every, every, anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We rejoice when we fully realize our connection to God and with each other. Joy and happiness are often used interchangeably, but there's a subtle difference between the two meanings. And theologian Henry Nouwen described that difference. He said that while happiness is dependent on external conditions, joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. This joy can be present even in the midst of sadness. In his book, Surprised by Joy, C.S. Lewis wrote the autobiography of his journey from atheism to Christianity. And in this book, he focused on joy and his quest for joy. And this is where, how the, the book centers on this quest. And he first felt this joy, this undescribable joy, when he was a little boy. And he was living in Belfast with his mom and dad and his brother, older brother Warren. And he was really into stories of uh, the Beatrix Potter stories, stories of, of anthropomorphized animals and just sort of magical stories. And Ireland is a place where there are plenty of these stories anyway. So he probably 
took on that, that, that uh, from the culture. But when he was a little boy, he lived a peaceful and charmed life outside of Belfast. And he, when he first had this experience of joy, his brother Warren had created like a little menagerie inside of a, a, a cookie tin. And in it was a uh, imaginary land that he and his brother would pretend was all around them. And he felt at that time, he, as a little boy, a longing. And not for a longing that was what was in the tin, but what would lay beyond that tin, the, the, the impulse the, that, that drove his brother to create it in the first place. And he sensed that there was something enchanted in the world that he could not possess, a joy that he couldn't grasp. However, Jack, as he was called by his friends and family, because uh, his name was Clive Staples Lewis, so you can imagine Clive was probably a difficult name to, uh, to go around with as a child, so he went by the name of Jack, or Jacksy, which was the name of his dog, which died, in a, um, sadly, in a, was hit by a car. But anyway, he adopted this, li this name Jack, and he kept it all of his life among his friends. And sadly, he lost his, began losing his faith when his mother died of cancer when he was only nine years old. And so his once idyllic life in Ireland seemed lost forever. And he wrote, with my mother's death, all settled happiness, all that was tranquil and reliable disappeared from my life. There was to be much fun, many pleasures, and many stabs at joy, but no more of the old security. So his father, not knowing how to raise his boys on his own without his mother, sent them off to boarding schools. And life in these schools were difficult for Jack and his brother. And there was a lot of fighting in the schools, teasing, and his father moved him around to different schools. But he was a very good student, so he earned a scholarship to Oxford University. And while he was at Oxford, he continued his quest. He had this lifelong quest to find that joy he had as a child. And he had many friends. He'd gather with friends like um, J.R.R. Tolkien and Hugo Dyson in a, in a pub. And they called themselves the Eeklings, and they would talk about philosophically, and, and two of his friends, Tolkien and Dyson, were Christians, and they would share, uh, they, they both had a common interest in old, uh, in old stories, in medieval stories, and, uh, and, and C.S. Lewis admired both of his friends. He also admired writings from people like G.K. Chesterton, and he realized that all the people that he admired were Christians, so he began listening to what they had to say. And through his intellectual quest, he found his way back to God. And he came to a, uh, an understanding about joy, and, it, and, it, and uh, he, he realized that joy was not a deception. Its visitations were rather the moments of the clearest consciousness we had when we became aware of our fragmentary and phantasmal nature and ached for that impossible reunion which would annihilate us or that self-contradictory con waking that would reveal not that we had had, but that we were a dream. He realized that these joys were an invitation into something beyond, an uh, invitation with the creator of that joy. And Lewis, when he came to that realization, gave his life to Christ, and he found that what he was searching for. Uh, so in this story, he talks about uh, this quest, and I believe it was the Holy Spirit guiding him along the way and through all of these understandings and God's patience as he guides us into finding and re re where God reveals God's self to us. God leads us along like he did with Lewis. And today, believe it or not, John the Baptist's ex exhortations that we read about, his, his sermons, are also a text about finding joy. And it's interesting, we juxtapose this text, which seems very harsh, and, and, uh, and, and also he, the way he uh, points his finger at the people around him, it seems accusatory. And we compare those to the other readings we had from Philippians and from Zephaniah, which talk about God granting joy. And so if we look deeper into this gospel passage, we can see that John the Baptist is speaking of God's grace as well. The last line of the passage, he says, uh, so many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people. Now, although it doesn't sound like good news, and we see this, his, his judgment, he's pronouncing judgment, we also realize that good news cannot come unless we, unless we, we can see it uh, against the bad news. 
And he speaks of an unquenchable fire that, and when we hear these words, we think of punishment, we think of the lake of fire, we think of hell. But it's interesting, if you read this a little more thoroughly, you'll see that, that he is not talking about that at all. He's not talking about uh, judgment or hell here. And John's message, John's message can be found if we work through the text uh, going back from, from these, two, uh, these two verses, where he says, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the, his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now frequently we Christians look at this through a prism of fire and brimstone. Like the Israelites, sometimes we can feel as if we are the wheat and everyone else is the chaff. And their gospel has plenty of judgment, but little grace and redemption. But John is really talking about a process, uh, about someone being wheat. Uh, John is really talking about some people being wheat and others, he's not talking about, sorry, he's not talking about some people being wheat and others destined to be burned in the fire. He's talking about the work that Jesus does within us. First of all, John dis disabuses the Jewish people and us from the notion that our faith makes us better. He says that he can raise uh, from the very stones uh, people, of uh, his people. And he calls his audience a brood of vipers and that, who warned you to flee the coming wrath. And this imagery of fire and snakes is meant to remind us what happens during a brush fire. In a brush fire, the animals flee and also the rodents and the snakes. And the snakes sometimes go and find their way into our homes if you ever live close to a place where there's a fire or maybe the mice find their way into the homes. They flee uh, to escape from the danger. And so he sensed and he told these people that they were fleeing the danger that they realized were there and they were looking for escape. They were looking for escape from the trouble of their times. Uh, the, as I mentioned last week, the Roman soldiers were there and there were uprisings and there were reprisals for the uprising. There were harsh taxes and repression that drove people to try to find spiritual answers. And so they came out to, to John the Baptist to be baptized, to find an answer. And they thought perhaps he could be the Messiah. But John tells them that Jesus does not offer escape, that Jesus offers new life. Jesus offers a new way of life where we do not have to be afraid of death. We, are, we use similar and different forms of escape today. Some people flee to religion and ritual, others to drugs or addictive behavior or binge watching television or social networking or a whole myriad of things to avoid confronting the things that scare them in this world. But John tells us that Jesus does not give us an escape plan, that he offers us new life instead. He separates from, uh, from us the the old husks, the things that, uh, that keep us apart, that keeps us from God. It purges us from the things that get in the way of true joy and peace. And if we open our hearts, God's grace will separate all that makes us suffer spiritually. His winnowing fork, as he drives and he works through the wheat, separates the husk from the true grain, the true grain, the wholesome grain and the empty husks are cast away. And those empty husks are things like our anger, our hatred, our shame, our guilt. These are the husks of our lives, the chaff of our lives. And God is rescuing us, not condemning us. And so today we say rejoice, salvation is at hand, the good news is at hand. And what happens to us after that chaff is burned away? We seek to do good things for others. So the people, when they realize their need for repentance, they say, what must we do to, uh, to prepare, as John calls them to do? And John responds, to act righteously. He says, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. First of all, he asks them to take a look around them and see the people around them, not just focusing on their lives and their needs and their, their fears, but to look around. And once they do this, they lose some of the fear and they realize that they are part, they, are, they have been given strength 
and a message and, and, a, uh, and a mission from God. He says to the tax collectors, he doesn't say, interestingly enough, don't be a tax collector. He says, don't extort from the people. Just take what, you, what, you, what you're supposed to take. And to the soldiers, he doesn't say, give up soldiery. And he says, don't extort people. We see God's work in our lives when God slowly changes us. In this process, where, where uh, John says that Jesus works in our lives by baptizing us with the Holy Spirit when, with fire, the Holy Spirit guides us to find those things in our lives, the chaff that we need to purge, get rid of. So the fire is not a fire that burns, but it's a refining fire. As, John, as we said earlier, we read last week um, from Micah that the fire that comes when, John announced, when, when Jesus' messenger comes, when the Messiah's messenger comes, will be a fire that refines, not burns. We seek God's work in our lives, and God slowly changes us. And he removes all the things that separate us from one another. So this is not a passive process. We're actually doing work in this process. And the church has had uh, an argument over this uh, 500 years ago when Martin Luther and the reformers broke away from the Catholic Church. They broke away from this emphasis on penance and works for salvation. And they right rightly claimed that salvation comes through our faith in Christ, not through our works. However, they also realized that if I do not change my behavior and do good deeds for others, that there is something wrong with my faith. Jesus, John said, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our ancestors, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of a to Abraham. We are called not just to pray and worship inside of these four walls. We're called to take our faith out into the world, out into the world in your lives, in all the people that you interact with, uh, carrying that spirit with you, and to work and to in exchange with each other fairly and honestly. And this is really how the good news is, 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 is shared. Because when we go out into the world and share ourselves, we're represented by our behavior. And Jesus says, uh, uh, interestingly enough, when, when uh, John was, was speaking, he said that he, was, he felt that he was not worthy of Jesus' grace. He said, I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. And since a servant usually has that job of untying the, the thong, John did not think he was worthy to be a servant. But God's grace came through and made John a messenger to Christ. And God's grace is bestowed on all of us, too, to go out, even if we feel unworthy. God sends us out. God's grace knows how we f that we feel unworthy, but God welcomes us through his grace. Once he found Christ, C.S. Lewis realized that he no longer had to worry about his quest for joy. At the end of his book, he wrote, when we are lost in the woods, the sight of a signpost is a great matter. He who sees it cries, look, and the whole party gather out, gathers around and stares. But when we in when we have found the road and are passing signposts every mile, we shall not stop and stare. He'll know where he's going. No longer looking for signs of joy, but finding it along the way in many signposts. Beyond our endless pursuit of happiness, we can be surprised by joy. The joy is not found in anything that we do, but the joy is found in the change that God is making in us. So for that, we rejoice. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Joy to the World. Uh, please sing along. The words will be in your bulletin and on the screen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and Nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all the songs employ, while fields and floods, rock hills and plains. 
Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat, repeat the sound in joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, and our thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the wonders of his righteousness. Of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. After our benediction today, we're going to gather around and sing. We're, we're going to stand up and sing the Hawaii Aloha. We won't be able to gather in a circle like we have done in the past, but if you can sing along by joining hands with the person you're with uh, and sing along with us. So, Go with the joy of the Lord in your heart. Go with the peace of Christ in, in all that you do. And go with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ha <laughs> ha